All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown, and I have uh, I've never met this guy until this moment right now. Duncan Lawrence, how are you? And uh, how are you? And where are you? I'm good. I'm in Amsterdam, and I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing awesome. Okay, you are from, uh, just so I can get this straight, you're from the Netherlands, right? Yes, correct. Yeah, I'm from the Netherlands. Um, yeah, for people that don't know, it's a tiny, tiny country in Europe. <laughs> Um, and its most famous city is probably Amsterdam. That's where I live. So, yeah. What is the city you're from? And I can't pronounce this. I, I looked at it. It's so, uh, what is the I get city? it. It's called Hellevoetsluis. And it's like 40,000 people that live there. And it's so, so small I, that Google Maps won't even know it. It's just like, it's, it's lovely when you're there and you want to go to the beach, but not really for living your whole life. Well, I okay. think the way you the way you said the, the how you pronounce the city is not how it's spelled unless I'm just crazy maybe maybe I'm uh, maybe, maybe I need to go back to oh yeah well I I think uh, well we say for an O and an E we say U so that would explain a lot already Hellevoetsluis and then we have a U and a Y makes a R so there's a lot of like tricky Dutch things in there um, Hello, Fuchslaus. I have no idea who ever came up with that name, but it's because it's like it's complete nonsense in uh, in Dutch. It's like the hell, the feet of hell, damn. Like what? it's kind of like that's that's creepy. You don't even want to go there if you hear that. <laughs> Man, well, it's, the way you describe the city sounds amazing, Duncan. How has your uh, your your overall pandemic experience been? For example, like I, I described, uh, I described uh, my experience certainly more so in the early days of the pandemic, kind of like living in a sci-fi movie. It was so bizarre. Yeah. How, how would you describe your, you know, your, your thing? Well, I think you're kind of right. Like it's, it, it was a little bit like, is this really happening? Are we like, is this, is this the moment where the world's going to end? Like, <laughs> is this the first step? I mean, like all those horror sci-fi kind of movies always start with the pandemic. So I was kind of like, okay, yeah. Let's not hope that it evolves into some kind of zombie virus here or something. But yeah, all sorts of things flipped through my mind. And I was in Los Angeles actually at the time. And I even went to the supermarket and it was one of the first times that I went alone to a US supermarket. And they're like big, like that's a new thing for when you're from the Netherlands, everything is tiny and small. So that was already really like, whoa, where do I get everything? And then there was a man screaming behind me, it's Armageddon, it's Armageddon. We have to get the hell out of here. There's no, to <laughs> no toilet paper. And I was like, what? Oh my God, am I gonna have this like the whole time because it's COVID now? So I was, yeah, I was freaked out at the start because of that one man who couldn't get toilet paper and screamed that it was Armageddon. And so, oh yeah, um, yeah. but it's been ups and downs. <laughs> hey, well, did, you, did you guys have the, the toilet paper kind of fiasco in the Netherlands yes. as well? What, that, why? We did, well, I was in LA back then, so I didn't really know how it was here. I don't really know, but I got texts text from my, from my friends and my parents and they were like it's so weird we can't even like go to the toilet anymore because we don't have toilet paper like this is a whole new thing for us like is this what it's going to be like for the rest of the pandemic because everyone was kind of thinking in like you know bigger scenarios and stuff but I'm happy that everything eased down after a couple of days after that. And that uh, yeah I just spent my, my, my time in corona or in lockdown on producing, making my first album, producing my own tracks, writing a bunch of songs. So yeah, I've been a very good musician in the pandemic. Duncan, uh, your album, it, uh, Small Town Boy, came out, of course, like you said, during the pandemic, November 2020, mm. I believe it is. Uh, talk, yeah, talk about Small Town Boy. If he, you know, For people who don't have the album or haven't gone through it, what do people need to know? I mean, Small Town Boy, is, it, it's my first album. and. My very first single is on there too, which is Arcade, which is crazy. And to see all this big success is amazing. But I hope that people will listen to the album and get to know me a little bit more because it's such a personal album. I really just based every song on a story, whether I heard it from friends or just I went through it myself. And I love that type of writing. I love to find the small daily things and turn them into something bigger through songs. And it's called Small Town Boy because I used to do that 
when I was younger too, because I was bullied a lot in high school. So I was always looking for something beautiful, something positive and music made that possible for me to not be in that negativity too much or even to take that negativity home and to make, turn it into something positive by writing songs about it. So uh, yeah, that's, that's kind of the thought behind it. But eventually just listen to it. Let me know what you think of it because I love hearing what people think of what I make. I think that's connection and I want to connect with people through this album. So hopefully I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, safe, safe to say you're already working on uh, another album or albums. I'm like, you, yes, you to be like definitely. A, like you, are you, are you the, you're, you're the type guy that's just buried in the studio. Just that's. Oh, I love doing. being in the studio, like creating and writing music is my number one thing that I, I like to do. Of course I love, I love performing just as much, but like if I could like spend every single day and night in the studio creating new songs, I'd be the happiest man alive, I think. So yeah, we're already working on uh, album two and there's a lot of things, uh, very exciting things happening behind the scenes right now. So it's it's cool. Yeah, I'm really excited. Hey, uh, true or false, Duncan, I was told that this small town that you grew up in, uh, nobody played music. Like, and, and, like you were the, like nobody, and maybe I'm blowing yeah. this out of proportion, is your town footloose? Is that the town? I mean, for, I, I, honestly, I have never seen that movie, so I can't. <laughs> In this movie, they no. But, they, I guess they weren't allowed to play music. They weren't allowed to dance. Oh, that's they what got, I'm picturing no, 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 in my head. No. No, no, not at all. No, and no, there was a, like a dusty local old theater somewhere in the corners of Hellefutzlaus. I mean, somewhere in those streets. But I, I mean, it was it was hard to find other like minded people who were into music, too. And we're kind of like, oh, that's cool um, that you make music and that you like to do that. I like to do that, too. It was really hard. So I was kind of the only one um apart from some other like maybe some girls at school that tried to sing and wanted to be a pop star and then like they became quite good actually but i i've never really heard of them after that so it's not really a town where a lot of stars rise from or something it's just a really tiny ass town with like uh, a, a dusty old music school and a local theater that's it so yeah, it, it wasn't very spectacular growing up there being a musician. Well, at least it wasn't like, you know, the Footloose movie where, you know, music wasn't allowed. You go to jail, nothing like that. So I'm, no, thank I'm, God. I'm, no, <laughs> I'm it would have been so. a great story, though. <laughs> yeah, Maybe I'm we gonna... can rewrite this biography. Like, I'm, I'm just going to call my management right now and just ask them to rewrite this into that, actually. Duncan <laughs> Lawrence. Makes way more sense. He fought through, you know, uh, the police through. telling him not to sing and he became a yes. doctor, something like, yeah. Uh, I love, I just, I don't know why I love this so much, crazy fan encounters. Now, I don't know if you've mm. had one of those fan encounters yet, being the fact that your music has mm. really blown up during the pandemic and, you know, fans yeah. couldn't really get to you. Or maybe you have, I don't know, because you did the TV shows and whatnot. Uh, have you had a good, uh, do you have a good crazy fan encounter you can share with me? Oh my God. Like I, I had a few actually, but most of them are kind of like, they're always nice. They Like it's always a nice encounter. Um, I mean, here in the Netherlands, everyone kind of gives you advice whenever you don't really ask for it because okay. that's kind of a Dutch thing to do. So a lot of the times you'll have a conversation and then at the end it's like, really nice you're wearing blue but try red next time and then they walk off and you're like what the hell that just happened so that's kind of a normal thing for me so maybe I'm just used to all those weird encounters because I grew up here but um I, let me think is there a weird one actually oh yeah I recently had something where I really really said do not to do this on your arm do not put this drawing on your arm that I just drew. Do not do it. I'm just putting my signature on this piece of paper. And she was like, but I really wanted to do it. And I said, don't do it. Otherwise I won't give it back to you. Next day she had it on her arm, super big. And I was like, oh no, oh, I asked you not to do it. But hey, if she loves it, I mean, I'm all in for it. I love to twos, but it was really kind of big. So that made me a little like think about what, uh yeah how fans look up to people and how how they interact with you but no weird encounters luckily 
have, when you wrote the signature, did you have a, was it a nice signature moment or was it one no, of those? No, it was really kind of like, a... I was really nervous because I was like, don't, please don't do it, please. And I was kind of like looking at her while scribbling it <laughs> and then like not really noticing. And I was like, because this is going to be on her arm or wherever if she does it. And it was, no, it was just a, a very dramatic moment. And I tried to spice it up with adding like a little like drawing of a heart and an arrow or something. I was like, just draw that, do that too. And she, she, she actually got that one too. So it's, it's, it's her choice, of course. But I, I thought that made me feel a little like uncomfortable, a little bit. Well, whoever that fan was, I hope you're enjoying your tattoo. Uh, congratulations. I, I hope so too, because I, I mean, it's your choice and it's like amazing that she got it. I mean, like, but I won't draw any tattoos anymore. <laughs> Love it. Duncan, it's almost time for you to uh, hit this uh, tour. I know you've got some uh, European dates. Yeah. Uh, talk, I mean, you, you must, you love performing. You must be just ready to feel, to hear the, the roar of a live crowd. Talk about this, uh, this tour. Uh, I can't wait. I mean, I, right before the COVID hit, I, I already did a, a European tour and that was the first time I ever toured in my life. And I loved it so much. I love connection. I love seeing people in front of me singing along to songs. I love that whole vibe, just being able to look your fans in their eyes, sing the, sing the song, just be in that moment, you know? So yeah, I mean, I can't wait. We announced a new tour and I'm so, so excited to do it. We're currently planning a lot of things behind the scenes when it comes to hopefully one day performing in the US, but we have to wait on the restrictions and everything to kind of ease down. Um, but yeah, I can't wait. I mean, are you, aren't you excited to visit am, concerts again? I'm super pumped. I mean, we, we've gone from zero concerts to everything opening up, you know, and yeah. towards the end of the year when your tour, I think your European tour launches September, I believe, uh, man, it's yeah. just going to be the greatest time for artists and fans because we're, we're going from zero to a hundred, basically. Are you doing, you're doing some, well, I, I assume behind the scenes, you're planning some U.S. dates, you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah, I, I'm told you've only the only place you've been in the U.S. is Los Angeles, right? It is. Yeah, because that was the first time I traveled to uh, the U.S. or actually one trip before I, I went to the U.S. or to L.A. Like, so I had another trip to L.A. Then the last trip I had to L.A. was actually right before COVID hit. So I didn't have to have the chance to visit any other part of the U.S. because of, of, of Corona and, and COVID. Yeah, lockdown. And restrictions. Well, you, you're going to be blown away by how big this cut. It's so the massive. supermarkets are. <laughs> I know, right? It's just it's just nuts. Duncan, your uh, your song "Arcade" uh, for people who don't know blew up on TikTok basically yeah. thanks to uh, Harry Potter fans. Now, are yeah. you are you? Uh, I don't know how this how how did it get started? Are you a Harry Potter fan? Did you uh, did you ask him to do this? I mean, can no. You, what, what I, yeah, I put a little spell on them and, just, <laughs> and got it, and that that was it. I sold sold my soul, and then I got famous. No, I I'm uh, I was actually I'm a big Harry Potter fan, but I had never really looked up any Harry Potter movies before on on like TikTok. So like the little short movies that they make on there. Um, it's amazing because they kind of used arcade under like their own kind of uh, scene. So they kind of created new scenes by cutting out the real scenes and then putting them together in a different order and stuff. It was really funny. And then like they played arcade under that because most of the times they let like two people make them fall in love that can't really fall in love in the true story. So there's a whole world out there with all different sorts of stories when it comes to Harry Potter. But that's what I like about that world. Everyone just creates their own vibe, just like just like with music. When you put out music, you never know what it means to the, the person who's listening to it. I think that's really cool. And the same thing is for Harry Potter, I think. Isn't that crazy? You're, you put your song out that has, to my understanding, nothing to do with Harry Potter. And now nope. it's forever linked to Harry Potter. Forever. In a way. Yeah. Yes. Right. <laughs> Duncan. Yes. arcade let's do this track yeah. arcade a uh, couple mm -hmm. of things i want to know um it took two years to finish is that is that correct kind of yeah i was working on arcade i was writing it and then i took it to about the hardy the producer and he and i spent a lot of time on working on multiple tracks so sometimes we would skip to other tracks just to find out what kind of song we wanted to make because we were really in that process of like finding out who i was as an artist and as a person and what i wanted to tell 
So uh, yeah, it took a long time, but hearing it now, I think it's totally worth it. Another thing I need to, I need to know, uh, a buddy of mine have sort of a bet, the intro, you know, the, the kind of a choir, the choir sound intro and outro. My buddy thinks yeah. you, you, it's, you use some, some sort of a virtual intru- instrument. My buddy Dave thinks, and I think mm. maybe you layered, like you just took your vocals, layered, 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 a little bit of an effect. So I guess it comes down to, is it a virtual, some sort of an instrument you use? Instrument, I can't say nope. the word. Or is it it's your voice? It's my voice. It's my voice, yeah. It's just very opera, like opera, would you say? Like kind of like cinematical opera. I love doing those type of things. I, it makes me feel weird. And I love just being like a little weird sometimes, you know, and have those quirky little moments in there. Um, but with arcade, I think it's actually really cool because whenever people hear that first, like, Ooh, they're immediately, like, they immediately know that it's that song that I'm about to perform. So I really like that intro, actually, as a special kind of value for me. Is there anything else we need to know? Why'd you call it arcade? All that, all that stuff. I, I was studying in a, in a city um, in the south of the Netherlands and there was this huge fair every year. It's the biggest fair of Europe. So the whole city would be one big arcade with just like, it's crazy, but even like full roller coasters are standing in the middle of the city. It's so cool. And I was studying there and I was falling in love for the first time and it broke my heart. And I kind of connected those two uh, things uh, um, to each other. Um, but also I was really thinking of a story of a friend of mine who passed away and she longed for the love of her life to say goodbye on the day that she passed away but he never did and that was still such a tragic story and again I turned a negative hopefully into something beautiful by writing songs about it and you know I just connected all those worlds and I was walking through that insanely big fair and then I think something just hit me. Duncan what is the uh, the best live performance as a fan that you have ever seen? I mean, it just blew you away. Give me one of those. Okay, so I've been to a couple of them actually. I've once seen uh, Snow Patrol here in the Netherlands in Amsterdam in the Ziggo Dome. And I love Snow Patrol, but their show was just so intense. And I did not know that the singer was this intense. I had no idea. And I was just blown away. It was just, I still remember that so well. I got goosebumps all over my, like all over because <laughs> of the lights and the visuals and the effects and just the way they were just playing that guitar. And it was 10 times louder than their, you know, their music really sounds. And it was just so intense that 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 was just the most beautiful concert that I've ever been to. Um, another one, I saw a, a Jebba life once. I don't know if you heard about Jebba. She's an amazing singer. Like, if you don't know her, please, please, please look her up. She riffs every single, like, every riff is just, like, original, new, and something out of this world. And that, to me, just was one of the most amazing performances ever because she sang it from the heart, you know? Most of the times people riff because they kind of want to you know, make something extra special or whatever reason, but she does it because she's, she feels it. And she just, it's, it's so insane to see that. I love it when artists sing their heart out and are just really in the moment and fully feeling what they're singing, even if they're riffing or shouting or not singing any lyrics at all. I, I love that. I think that's so special. When it comes to your performances, this is a two-part question. You're going to like part of it. You're going to hate the other part. Sure. What do you consider your best performance, your personal best, everything ah. went right? And the complete flip of that, what do you consider your worst? I mean, everything went straight to hell. Give me... All right, so I'll give you my worst. Um, I it, Does it also count when... Okay, this is going to be a story because I, I don't have a lot of performance moments yet. Of That's course, fine. it's been COVID and stuff, but... Um, I'm going to tell you my worst and how, the, how we solved it, which was amazing. I was doing Eurovision, which is a huge show here. And I won that in 2019. And it's amazing. It's a big talent show. And it's about like songs instead of artists. It's more about the song. And like it's Europeans decide which country, because every country sends out a representative, which country wins for that year. In 2019, that was me with Arcade. So after that, a year later, I had this 
uh, comeback moment, but it was still COVID. And I, in the middle of everything, I got a panic attack and I did not know what it was. And it was the worst experience of my life ever. Eventually they, they broadcasted the rehearsal that I did, but I was already there. I was already almost like, you know, whoop. and then it came and I just couldn't do anything. And I was just, I was frozen literally frozen and I never had that before so that was my worst moment um I think it's really important to be open about these things especially when fans are listening of course about mental health so that was my worst another worst one I'll give you one that's more funny is when (laughs) I when I did this when I was still in a rock band and I did this insanely high note and while doing it I found I, I was standing, I was standing on one of those like, you know, monitors that, that is in front of you. How do you call them? Like one of those boxes that uh, yeah, monitor, for yeah. sound. And then I stood on that. And as I do this and do an insanely high note and I open my mouth completely, I fall into the audience. My mic goes into my mouth. So the whole audience hears that. <laughs> I have to crawl back up and they push me back on the stage and I fall I literally fell like backwards and I and and then I was like okay I can do two things I can run off or I can just start singing it and I started singing again and I stood up and everyone laughed and and it was really funny but that was by far my worst worst stage experience ever oh so uh, now you had them that's a night the microphone goes into your throat (laughs) That is that's that's Hall of Fame right there. I love I mean, that. I know there are going to be a hundred different stories about this one right now, the, the the story that I just told. But yeah, that's the truth. That's like what happens. Like <laughs> wow. Duncan, you don't know this about me, but I am mm. absolutely obsessed with the paranormal. Ghosts, oh. UFOs, everything in between. I've got a podcast. All right. Called, yeah, Paranormalish is the podcast. You know, there yeah. Uh, you told me before we started this countdown, you have had a paranormal encounter. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I did. Well, I did. I, uh, there is actually two. There was once someone who passed away and uh, I was, I, I was sitting in the garden with my mom and all of a sudden there was a butterfly, which was the favorite animal of that person sitting on my mom's shoulder for half an hour. So that was maybe a visit or something. Um, and I had this, I grew up in this house, um, my dad and I lived there and we were sure it was haunted. Like we, my dad got really sick. Um, like he felt really like there was something going on. Our keys went missing at night. I would play this cassette because like, I would play like stories before I went to bed. That's how young I was. And then when the ghost of Aladdin would appear, the cassette and my dad heard this he was sitting in the next room and he heard this happen because he ran in and turned it off the the tape went like roar, 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 every time the ghost appeared so i don't think that i think that ghost wanted to make something very clear like i'm a ghost i'm here but as that happened the door slowly started to open and i hear my dad what the hell is this? And he runs to my room. He unplugs it. That thing goes on for a while, at like, and then stops. And that was the moment we moved out of the house. <laughs> no, and you moved out because of because that. Because of that. And my dad started, every time he was home, you know, feeling sick and he stayed home from work or something, it just got worse and worse and worse. And things started disappearing. There are still things that we haven't found back. It's so weird. Was there yeah. a history Do you to want to hear house? another one? Like, oh my God. Yes. What, what else you got? Okay. So this is not a story that I have like experienced, but I heard this story a week ago. And I think this is going to blow your mind of someone who talked to a, a woman who was 70 years old and they were just sitting by a campfire in Sweden and just talking about things. And this woman was uh, from Finland. And all of a sudden they were like, let's talk ghost stories. Let's do it. And the woman was like, I'll tell you one, I'll start. And I don't think you guys can sleep after this. So she's told the story of her growing up in a house in Finland, in the middle of Finland, like somewhere very deserted. And 
she said, me and my brother had no idea that the maiden that we saw for until we were 10 or 11 was not real. She was what? not real. She wasn't there. Years later, they found out that someone from the village told them this maiden is someone like they keep seeing her every time someone moves there. The story is that the dad, the first original like father of the house, they had a maiden. He abused her, apparently. She had to put away her child, had to kill it and bury it. And she was still looking for her child. Every single father that lived in that house, God was alcoholic, was uh, committed suicide. This is a horrible story, but that's like the most scariest one that I've ever heard in my Where's, life from what, someone close. I need to check. We need to chat off air at some point. I need to get mm. details on this house, where it's at. Where it is, because you're going to look it up. <laughs> I'm going to do so much research. You're going to go research. there. <laughs> I'm going to get my little ghost pack and I'm going to go over there. Oh my God. Duncan, talk about the, you mentioned earlier, you kind of touched on it, bullied as a kid. Yeah. But uh, I believe you said in some interview that after all, after all that happened, it basically made you stronger and you have become it's the it, artist yeah. you are today. And maybe you are, clearly you're helping out people who are, who are going through it now. I don't know how you mm. want to phrase that, but yeah, what, what can you say about that and how it affected you? uh growing up i mean it was a tough period in my life i mean it's never fun to be uh you know kind of be talked bad about or just people that talk behind your back bad about you or just don't appreciate what you love or what you want to be who you want to be it, it was really a struggle and at the same time i was still trying to figure out who i was even i did not know yet i didn't know what i wanted in life i was young and i felt very trapped and like as if i did not have a choice to kind of figure out things myself before i would be judged for them and stuff so i changed everything i changed the way i looked the way i talked the way i walked even um just to fit in and eventually i was like you know i can waste all my life on trying to fit in but i'll never fit in so let's just not do it anymore let's just surround myself with music and you know really focus on that but also surround myself with people and even if it's one person that actually believe in me and that actually accept me for who i am um, but it took a long time. And I think time is a big factor when it comes to being bullied in overcoming those things. And, and every day it's still, I still hear those voices in my head saying like, look different, change this, do that, do this, go to the gym, do that. You know, like you need to be strong because you need to be, you need to prove to everyone that you're that tough guy and you can do it. And, and then I'm like, you know, I am who I am. And um, it actually made me stronger because I can look at myself now and be like, hey, I like you. I think you're beautiful and I think you've done a great job and you really found your peace and happiness in something really cool. And it's also your job and you're nailing it right now. So, yeah, I'm <laughs> happy. Yeah. Safe to say, safe to say the sweetest revenge is just living your best life, right? Yeah, I hope that my bullies just wake up happy too. I mean, like if they're waking up happy, they won't bully anymore. So I, I think that's that's the one thing that I learned too is looking back on it and actually seeing how unhappy everyone was in that situation. Not only me, but also the people who did it. May there were a lot of probably a lot of things in the back of their minds too. So yeah, it's all forgiven, uh, but never forgotten though. I tell you what, though, this is. This is me talking and not you, but you know, they are hearing you on the radio and seeing you on the TV and thinking, <laughs> oh man, what an idiot I was. That's, you know, that's just me. Well, that's on them. They can sit <laughs> yeah. on that for the rest of their lives. <laughs> yeah, there, take that. <laughs> True or false, you write almost, this is what I heard. You write almost every day. You write a lot with your fiance, uh, Jordan. And uh, yes. basically you write, 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 write. That's all you do. Right, right, right. Yeah. Well, I, I also eat, breathe, sleep. Um, you know, I do the normal things too, actually, but yeah, I like to write a lot. Yeah. Yeah. And you, uh, but if I, I'm not performing, I'm writing most likely. And you've, you've written songs for, I think there was a, a K-pop group that hit number one in yes. South Korea with the track. What, what's that track? TVXQ. Yeah. It was so cool to, 
to be a part of that. It was so cool because I, my song was originally in English and then they translated it and they made this cool production around it. It's just, it's just really cool. Uh, so the band is called TV, TVXQ. Um, and my song, it's in Korean. So I have no idea how to pronounce the title, but it was called Reconnect when I wrote it. But maybe it's Reconnect in Korean right now, but it just has a Korean title. So cool, man. And also there's a song- I love have, it. Yeah, it's, it's so, it's amazing. Uh, you have a song on the Love Victor season two soundtrack. I yeah. What, what else? You yeah, got? yeah. What? Yeah. What? All, yeah. How many other songs do you have floating around? Who else are you writing with? I'm I'm writing with a lot of people right now, but uh, actually, I'm kind of like in the next couple of weeks or months, I'm kind of toning it down to a smaller team and just really focusing on what I want and what I want with the new album and with new music and stuff. But I always love to write with other people there's something really cool coming up by the end of the summer most likely with uh, a friend of mine so that's and also in summer with another friend of mine so there's a bunch of things that i cannot say anything about which really sucks but they're all very exciting which are coming your way and i'm really looking forward to that actually but i mean i've always dreamt of this life you know i've always dreamed of this this chance and to be able to travel all around the world hopefully soon and just write with people and be creative. What are your fam, like your close, you know, your family, your friends, uh, your inner circle, what is their reaction to all this success? Not that you don't have, you know, a lot of growth ahead of you, but what, what's their reaction to all this success that's going on? I mean, they're, they can't really believe it. It's the same with the feeling that I have. It's still so weird and so unreal because of course this all happened within lockdown. It makes it feel a little, just surreal still. I just actually want to hop, go on the plane, just fly and see it for myself or if I can even see it for myself because it's also like, you know, it's it's on the internet and it's everywhere, but it's it's just amazing to see that, that they also say this. It's so insane to open TikTok and in every five seconds you hear your voice, they would say, like my voice, and, and they would be so proud. They're still so proud of everything because they know how hard it is to be from a, a small country like the Netherlands in Europe, uh, where no one really expects artists to come from and then, you know, work hard and, and, and get this. So um, I'm really happy that they support me and that I have a really, really warm and cool family behind me that just always says like, you're doing what you love. You've always dreamed of this. And that reminder is so nice. That one reminder of, I remember when you were young and you were always singing and this is your dream and you're living it because it helps with what I just said earlier with that bullying and overcoming all those things and not listening to those voices in your head, but just being like, you know, I've been doing this for a while. Ever since I was two, I like doing this. So I think I'm on the right path here. That's really nice to get that um confirmation from friends and family sometimes quick recap uh arcade it's mm. been out if you're not on this track i don't know what your problem is get on it uh the album small town <laughs> boy that album's out you know he's working on new music uh look out for all kind of stuff duncan what am i forgetting to ask you i mean you pretty like it i think you ask pretty much everything that that they need to know i mean we can dive into very personal deep things but I don't think I, I might keep that a little as a secret to keep a little bit of mystery around me. Fair enough. And when you get to L.A. at some <laughs> point, we have to uh, we have to yeah. get some ta tattoos, you know, one of these days. You know, Let's do it. Let's get it up, a paranormal know. activity to do like something that's really weird, like like something freaky. Like when you look at it, you're like, oh, oh, no. <laughs> yeah, that's the reaction yes. we're going for. Yeah. But no. <laughs> then why did you guys do that? I don't know. We just, yeah, it was a long it's time. kind of cool, but no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Duncan, at the, uh, at, thank you for hanging out. At the uh, end of, too. of course, man, at the end of every uh, countdown, fist bump to make it official. Can you tap that cam? Boom. Boom. <laughs>